what is going on everyone welcome back to the shop here car mechanic simulator i got a couple jobs lined up already so this first one we already have on the rack we've got the outer tie rod wheel hub bearing front drive shaft wheel hub bearing sway bar rear end link and rear shock absorber a that need to get repaired and of course there's another option here controlling car feels loose and it's a sway bar rear end link so we got a little bit of work here in front of us. Now, I've had a couple of questions. I'm going to try to get them both from the last video answered here. I did answer one in the comments. But another one that I was asked, and or someone pointed out to me, uh, these stars. Now, I had wondered what these were as well. And I didn't really look really into it. Because it was like there for a minute and then it went away. So, these stars, is a not, they're not very nice. It, it, it helps take out a lot of the guesswork. So, oh, can't do it when you're in the lift. Okay, so if you go back in, outer tie rod, wheel hub bearing, we, we remember all this stuff, front drive shaft. So let's get into the car here, and you see, let me get this off to make it easier to see. Alright, so we back out, and there we go. Everything that's showing up in blue is what needs to come out. It's showing you all the parts. Whatever you highlight, if you highlight with a star, it will show up. So let's see, the front drive shaft here. There it is right there. So let's go back into this. I'm going to deactivate that. And there it goes. It disappears. So if you want to make it easier on you, say it's you know a brake job. And it's one brake pad and one brake rotor. And then maybe you got to change the oil or whatever. But you don't want to go and go around and check all four. There you go. You can just light it up nice and easy. Now, of course, you know, pure-hearted mechanics. Oh, well, that's too easy. Well, okay, yeah, I agree. But let's remember, we are playing a game after all. We don't want to... This is the one thing I hate, the in and out camera. I really, really hate that. But, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, it might take, you know... Depending on book hour or whatever it says, you know, it, it might take, uh, you know, three hours or whatever to fix something. But, you know, doesn't, that doesn't mean we want to spend that long, you know? Alright, so let's get this tire up. Now the part remains as well. See, I just pulled. I've already got the wheel bearing out. I've got the tire right end off. The parts still show up there. But in order to get this front drive shaft off, gotta jump over to the other side. Now, for I just mentioned book hour. For those who don't know, book hour is basically. I mean, I guess in some areas, yeah, there are actual books, but everything's on the computer now anyway. But it's basically the. If I remember this correctly. So I've had it explained a couple times to me. Some have said it's the manufacturer's uh, ideal time to fix something. Uh, and then, I forget, I honestly don't remember what the other one was. But basically, it's, it's a set time on when the expectation is for a job to be done. You know, how long it takes for that part or the, those parts to get fixed. So... You know, book hour, and usually doesn't include tires or rims. Uh, it might include brakes. Uh, I don't know if someone is more familiar with that, they can let me know. But bigger things, like an alternator. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Radiator or intercooler, like right here, they have here. Those would be things that have book hours on them. And it generally, and that's also another way how mechanics get paid. Um, the more tedious jobs, the longer it takes, the more money they can make. So, uh, my friend that works in Audi, uh, he was telling me that he, he booked, like, you know, 215 hours or whatever. Of course, that's not how many hours he actually worked, but that's how many hours he booked on the jobs that he was doing with the cars. So, it, people will look at their bill and say, well, you know, it took you this long to do it, and, you know, it, it's not what it seems. I'll just put it that way. So it's a common misconception that mechanics deal with all the time. I'll just do tie. Now, also, you know, I am not. Oh, I need to look at the part here. 
I'm not an expert when it comes to mechanics. I mean, I'm not a mechanic. My history is truck driving. But I've dealt with a lot of mechanics. I've talked to a lot of mechanics. I've done a lot of work on my own vehicles. Uh, 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 steering rack on, a, on my 2002 Dakota when I had that. Now, of course, I've got a 2012 Charger, and I'm probably never going to touch that because I worry if I do, I'm going to throw something out of whack. Front drive side. It's just a minute. Drive shaft, if I can speak right. Just a regular one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Am I blind? I think I am. There it is. I need a wheel hub bearing, and I think that takes care of the front. Camera angles. There we go. Part mount mode. Now, I also had someone ask me why a part turns red. So, this will be a good time to demonstrate it right here at the brakes. Usually, a part. Oh, let, me, let me dismount. There we go. So, I'm highlighting right now the wheel hub but the brake rotor turns red you must take off the brake rotor to get to the hub so the red will light up any part that needs to come off first before you can move on to another one so uh, let's see you probably can't really see right here oh, okay. there we go yeah I'm gonna highlight the engine engine block right there you can see the head right above that turning red so that's what I need to take off um, you know so the that is one way if you guys have no mechanical skills you are able to you know keep track of what you need to uh, you know what, what you need to do now it is easy to miss something I have done that myself because not everything shows up and that was it for over here let me back out come over here Yeah, as far as stories go with uh, auto mechanics and cars and things like that, I've, I've got a, I've got a couple. The one I love the most is with the GMC or Chevy Arcadias and Traverses. Now, a few years ago. They changed the motor in those vehicles. And I had someone tell me before at one of my GM, uh, GMC dealerships, uh, it was like they went to a 3.5 or something like that. I don't quite remember what the motor was, but it was a new motor. And they replaced an older one. And the mechanic was, you know, I and, and this was, there was three or four of them sitting around, you know, while we were talking about all this. And they're like, I, we have no idea why they got rid of this motor. That motor was great. There was no issues with it. This and that, whatever. And he says, now this new one they have. And he says, most of our orders are warranty jobs on these motors. And what was happening was the motors were set to 7,000 miles on the oil change. Uh, I don't need to do all this one. Yes, I do, because I need that bearing. Um, so, they were set to 7,000 miles on the, uh, on the oil changes. And people were going that long, if not longer. And the problem was, at 40, 50, 60,000 miles, and this was on conventional, too, uh, the problem was with, you know, with, with these with these engines, they were basically seizing up. At 40, 50,000 miles, people were already having to come in and get an engine replacement. And it was, the, the way these guys explained it to me was, shock was over A, rear link, and another hub or bearing. Um... You know, the engines were just, you know, these newer style engines, they're just wound so tight. Uh, they... They, uh... You know, the, there's no room for error. There's, you know, one little hiccup and it can throw the whole thing out of whack. 
and and you know we got to talking about that and i said well yeah you know i i fear with because i i drive this uh my dakota it's a 2002 at the time 4.7 v8 you know nothing technical about it and you're a, it's pretty much a basic motor um you know, I felt that it was one of those those motors where you could probably probably get away with throwing sand in it, and it would still run. And even a lot of my Dodge guys, I would dealerships I go to, they were, oh yeah, you know, it was a good motor. Um, but these newer ones, you know, the tolerance on them is just so small, and they don't have the forgiveness like the older motors used to have. And so, you know, doing the oil changes and using synthetic instead of conventional is one ideal. And just because of the... Uh... Oh, I already got that one. Got that one? Okay. I think we're all good. Finish order. Done. Uh, you know, because of the way these motors are. So, you know... If anyone, you know, those of you out there who have a newer car, you know, stay up to date on your oil changes. Otherwise, you might be needing a, uh, a new motor before you know it. And the, getting back to these our, uh, traverses and Arcadias in just a moment. Let me take over this here. This is one of the blue colored ones. And they're special jobs. I think I've already shown one to you guys, if I remember correctly. But, see? No parts discovered. You have to figure out what's what. No no stars here to help you out. Uh, all parts must be 100% repair. So, I bought this machine from a friend who needed money quickly. He ensured me the car is working, but something strangely pulls to the left. Uh, and, then, and this strange smell like mushrooms. From what I remember, he works behind a desk, not in sales. Anyway, check what's wrong with it. Make it usable. So, nice, long, laundry list of stuff to do. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and start just pulling off all, all four tires. This car is beat to hell. It's rusty. So, finding everything is going to be a little difficult. Right off the bat, though, I can see. We've got the cross member we're going to have to replace rotor here, the caliper we're going to have to replace. So, a lot of disassembling here. Looks like that pad is going to have to go. Possibly that cap. But, okay. Now, we'll, while I disassemble this, I'll go ahead and finish my Arcadia stuff. So, I'm hitting all my dealerships. Uh, most of my area was from, you know, western suburbs up to uh, basically the Wisconsin line and I'm hitting shops in Libertyville and this is all in Illinois northwest side northwest suburbs of Chicago so anyway I'm, I'm hitting all these locations and I get to my stop in Libertyville and they've got an Arcadia sitting there up on the rack transmissions out and uh, uh, the engine pan is down engines half a cent just you know taken apart and you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, let me guess. And I said, uh, you know, extending on the oil, oil changes and engine sludge. This guy grabs the painter cup, brings it over to me, and I, I kid you not, this stuff was molasses. He turned it upside down, and nothing moved. It did not budge one bit. And I said, you pulled that out of the engine. And he goes, yeah. He says that was just what was in the pack, and because he had just started a project and just basically got it all assembled at that point, and the transmission was the same way. So, from my understanding, you know the the issue had been fixed, you know, not too long after that. I mean, remember, we're talking like four or five years ago, maybe longer, and the issue has been fixed. I, I guess GM updated the computer software in the cars and so now the issue of the oil basically turning the sludge is a moot point it doesn't happen anymore so uh, those of you who do drive those those vehicles you know you can breathe a little easy if you're hearing this for the first time and you have not experienced that but you know just keep in mind you know, stay up on your oil changes you know, 
doesn't, uh, it, but then again, at the same time, it all depends on your driving style, you know, are, are you a person that does a lot of highway driving, a lot of country driving, so you're cruising at 60, 65, whatever, you might be able to get away with uh, going a little further on those oil changes than, than most other people, um, that just disappears, and to me that just that doesn't look right though. Oh, it's just all floating there. But anyway, the uh, but if you're a person that does a lot of city driving, suburban driving, things like that, you're doing a lot of start and stop and whatnot. Yeah, you might want to stick close to your uh, oil change window. That stuff breaks down pretty quick. You're using it pretty hard, and I mean. I've seen some bad oil in my time. Working for a used oil company, dealing with a lot of Jiffy Lubes and dealerships. I've seen a good amount of stuff. Now, getting back to the car here, a car like this, this beat up, this old, you're gonna really wanna check the bushings. Look at this one right here. See how it's mostly that dark black instead of the gray? That right there is a bad bush. So you're gonna really want to pay attention to these things here and probably end up pulling all of them out. Uh, I'm gonna let's see what else we got over here now. Oh, I gotta pull the tire off. I mean, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and just, you know, when you got the extra cash, just stock up on it. Just, you know, buy yourself. Uh, you know, 20 bushes, large and small. Because chances are you're gonna get the cars like this where you're gonna go through it like it's Pez candy. Yeah, there's another one. We'll pick that out too. Alright, so how are we doing here? Let me get back to the car. Alright, did we find everything? Yes, we did. It was all suspension work, boys. Everything has been found. So now, I get to go buy all of this stuff. So let's see, we got one. I'm gonna go. Um, this is where it might be a good idea to kind of write things down as well. So we don't have to continue to go back and forth. Let me go back to the car, because I'm going to start off with the rubber bushing. So we need one, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. Eight. Eight rubber bushings, so you know what's screwed? I'm just going to buy ten of them. That stuff. Solid rear axle. I'm gonna need one of those. I think I'm gonna need all four brake pads too, aren't I? Yeah. So four brake pads, solid rear drive axle. One caliper. Two calipers. Or is that from the old car? See, this is what happens when you don't sell off your worn on parts. So there's one. Two.
All right. Cross member B. Oh, well. For the hell of it, I'm going to go ahead and put that in right now. that stuff out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and actually sell that. Now the only thing about this game is I've noticed is it's quite not like the real world with disposal of parts. Now many people probably aren't going to care about that. It's not, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They don't care, right? But a lot of this stuff here would go into a scrap bin. You know, these brake rotors, scrap bin. Bushings, garbage. And the pads, it eh, depends on the shop. You know, they'll throw it in the garbage or a scrap bin. And the drive axle, scrap bin. Because the scrappers will come along and they'll pay them money for that. The scrappers will take it to the, to the scrapyard. Let's see, I need an inner tie rod, outer tie rod. Steering rack. Two tie rods. I don't think I paid that much on mine. But yeah, it. Scrappers will come along, you know, the same thing with tires. I mean, they're not scrappers that take the tires, but there are guys that, uh, when you, when you go to a tire shop and, and, uh, you know, get new tires put on, those old tires, I mean, some shops will sell them, but, uh, you know, depending on the tread that's left. Uh, others, they go ahead and recycle them. And there's a truck that comes along. And it's a service, you know, they, I think they pay for it. Uh, but yeah, these guys come along and away go the old tires. Lower suspension arm about those, so put new bushings up in there. Uh, what else would get thrown out? Air filters, obviously. You know, that, that gets trashed. Um, did I have to replace anything on this one? Nope, we're good. Now, here's the thing, though, about oil filters. I mean, some people will just say, screw it, throw it away. Some states require you to recycle the oil filters. Iowa, for example, requires you to recycle oil filters. It was a law that went in a few years ago, and it was, it was good for us and the position I held because that means that was more business. Um, but at the same time, though, you know, it, it wasn't good because you, know, you, you get in the rural areas and even in the metropolitan areas, actually. The uh, you know the, the they would rather have the company that does everything in one. You know, I want I want someone that's going to bring me my new oil as well as take away my old oil and you know this and that whatever. And that's understandable, you know. Nothing wrong with that. Right, what am I missing? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I can't put the lower control on first. That's different. I talked about this with my Audi, with my Audi friend Kevin, and I said, you know, it's kind of funny. You you take off. Normally, you would you. The way you can do things here is not how you would do it in the real world. 
I said you would probably unbolt the shock absorber. And then if there was an upper control arm, that. And then the lower. And then you take off the knuckle. And then the lower control arm. And he goes, yeah. You know, that's... And then reverse it for putting it all back together. Um, but here, you know, you can do whatever, whatever you want, and there's no consequence to it. it nothing's going to fall on your foot. So it, the way they can take these things apart is a little unconventional. Ah, need a vented. Don't know how I didn't catch that. Little different. I think this is one of those jobs where whatever part you took off has to be, if, if, if it's, the part that was damaged needs to be replaced with a new part. Yep. I just put another new caliper on the front. I need to take that one off. This is probably where it pays off to go ahead and do things one at a time. So really, I gotta take this off too? that in. Wow, see? It doesn't alert you until you want to, you know, even until you're done with the car. I had a feeling I was forgetting something. But since something wasn't, it wasn't showing up. Alright, well since I've got this off, what calipers need to be changed? That caliper, the other one, no. Just that one and that one, okay. Oh, glare, holy crap. Um, but as I was saying, the... You know, so it depends on the state. Some states require you to recycle oil, recycle oil filters. Um, select landfills in, in Iowa, for example, will are allowed to take... Oh, I really don't want to put that back on. Do I have to? That looks ugly. Well, looks like I have to. Uh, are allowed to take oil filters. Um, it's not a law here in Illinois, but, uh, you know, it is, it, I did have a company that the, I think it was waste management, would not pick up the dumpster anymore. The driver noticed that there was oil coming out, I believe, is what I was told, and so the guy's like, yeah, because he was, the, this was a truck place. Uh, great wide, I think it is. Um, and up there in Dubuque. 
and he was just throwing the, the the truck filters in the in you know cardboard boxes and yeah the garbage man must have caught it one of the days and said nope not happening he says i won't uh i won't be picking up here until you know I, I, i'm assured that there is no there are no oil filters inside here Also, if anyone really, you know, if you guys do a lot of your stuff at the house or whatever, uh, one way to get rid of used oil is the oil burner. A lot of places, especially in the country, use oil burners to heat their garages and whatnot. Uh, another thing is oil drives. I, I don't know about every other area around, but I know here in the Chicagoland area, uh, there was some towns do have oil drives and it's kind of in the suburban country areas where you know you've got your Walmart and everything else but then you go down the street and it's still cornfield and uh, so yeah they'll have oil drives for anyone to come up there and as long as it's in a safe container and it's not leaking all over the place or something you are able to drop off your used oil free of charge and dispose of it safely all right I think that is it for this car I do not see anything else showing up yep no other order summary everything's in the green we are all done total money spent was 26,037 or 26,000 jeez 2637 dollars so the total payout is going to be five thousand forty-five dollars. Very nice. Get out of here. There we go. Thirteen thousand is what I'm up to now. Let's take a look here. See if I've got any. I do have five points available. So let's take a look here real quick. I'm going to expand the garage. There we go. Expand that. Let's see. Faster walking. Discount in shops. Uh, parts examination. Repair. Thread tester. Instantly examine three parts. First time seeing a car. Ah, tablet. Yes, I will use that. Let's do the examine part. kind of want to hang on to this but I don't know if I really have to buy anything else or not well you know what can't go wrong with a 5% discount so go with that as well and we're not quite there yet got to get the level 7 to unlock this suction here you can see them over here a little 6 maybe so that is gonna be it that's what we opened up here we opened up the repair table and I, yep I do have the testing area now too so if I want to bring a car in there and test it out to see what is exactly wrong with it and narrow it down I am able to do that very nice little thing to do uh, repair bench kind of pointless right now I think I can repair some stuff no items to work with but that reminds me I need to clean out my inventory here a lot of stuff I need to sell Let's just sell all junk to start with. That cleared out a lot. We'll keep this one just in case. I sh um, yes. Alright. All my bushings are gone. Damn. I must have used them. But, alright guys, that is going to be it for now. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully I did not bore you to death with some of those stories and information. I know I was all over the place. I'll try to clean it up. I promise. But, until next time, thank you guys for watching. Take it easy.